Hi, my name is Manon George and I'm a UK registered nurse. Hi everyone, my name is Leanne Fernandez and I'm a registered nurse here in the USA. Hi guys, my name is John Felix Martin and I'm a registered nurse here in New Zealand. Hello guys, kamusta? My name is Jen. I'm a Filipino registered nurse here in Australia. Hello everyone, kamusta po kayong lahat dyan? Ako nga po pala si Ryan and I am a registered nurse dito po sa my Calgary, Alberta, Canada. My name is Maria Karen Guerrero Viola and I'm a Filipino nurse here working in Alemania, Germany. You just need to take two examinations. That will be the NCLEX and the IELTS exam. For the NCLEX, waited for my eligibility for three months. Also, you need to take the English ex the English examination because that's the language, of course. Um, you need an overall band score of 6.5 with a speaking score of 7. So the first language here in New Zealand is English. So it's very easy to communicate with people, with doctors, with patients. And before I came here, um, I was actually a nurse in Ireland. So before practicing, you actually need to be registered here. And in order for you to be a registered nurse here, you need to do a bridging program or they called it a competency assessment program. But fortunately, they granted me direct registration because I was a nurse in Ireland. So if you are a nurse in the UK, in Ireland, in Singapore, in the US or in Canada, New Zealand Nursing Council would actually give you direct registration if you have a proof or enough experience to satisfy that you're competent enough to be a nurse here. Singapore. I initially thought I could immediately work here as a nurse. Ang tinik ko lang na exam, English test, which is during that time 2017, IELTS pa yung popular na English test. For the IELTS, I completed other documents and then I submitted to AFRA, which is a governing body here. Parang PRC yung sa atin. And then I took a three month uh, bridging course, initial registration for overseas nursing. You can check out AFRA's website for the updated news test. For the IELTS, score of seven on each section. Listening, writing, reading and speaking should be seven and above and of course the total band score should be seven and above as well always check the regulatory body ng province na pag apply mo ng nursing because every province is different so meron kami tinatawag na NNAS ayun yung National Nursing Assessment Service and if you qualify for refresher course bibigyan ka nila ng palugit to to uh, submit all the paperwork that you need. Uh, I think the wait times to be able to get into the program, to the refresher program is one to two years. Medyo mahaba siya. Kaya yung iba, ang ginagawa is nagpo-practical nursing muna. Uh, kasi mas mabilis yung pathway ng practical nursing kesa sa RN. It's because yung bridging ng RN is napakatagal, ang tagal ng wait time, mga two years. And then yung refresher course is aabutin ng one and a half year, including the acute practicum. And then you have to write your NCLEX exam. So mga in approved nila for the fresher course kasi, you need to have at least 1700 hours. 1700 hours is like 1700 nursing work hours. Hindi counted yung mga volunteer sa Pilipinas. Kailangan work paid hours siya. So kapag hindi ka pasok doon in the last four years, kasi kailangan din ng 1700 hours in the last four years, is bibiyang kanila ng, ng choice. Pwede ka mag arna. Ang RNAP is the challenge exam. If you fail the RNAP, you need to go back to zero nursing in Samay, Canada. But if you pass, you go to the bridging program. In 2016, I was called and I took this interview. I passed the interview and then after that, uh, we were endorsed to an, to an employer. And I also passed the interview for the for, from the employer. And while doing this, um, we were... Um, taking an intensive training language training program which took us like six months to eight months i guess so this language training program we have to to take for with the i mean we have to take the a1 level the a2 the b1 and then the b2 so those are the language levels and for us to be able to fly here we have to pass the b1 exam or the b1 level so i passed it i flew to germany and then I started, or I continued learning the language through their program there. And it was all, it was pure German. 
And so I passed the B2 level and then from there, that's the time we could take the recognition exam. So the recognition exam is like the, ano eh, the nursing licensure exam in the Philippines. So we took that and it's not just written. So there are different kinds of exam. It could be written, it could be oral um, exam, it could be practical exam. The unang -una ko pong test noon is the IELTS academic. From after the IELTS, uh, from uh, interview with the agency, it took us tatlong buwan lang. And nakalipad na po kami dito sa UK. Nag-overseas nursing program kami. Short uh, program lang yun for six months. And then we finally got our PIN. Um, ngayon po, just to let you know, ang mga nurses ngayon, when they come here in the UK, they take uh, not just the English exam, but they would also have the CBT and the OSCE tests. Now, English. English po ang gamit na salita dito, but there are certain words that you'd have to learn pagdating nyo dito. Dito sa may Canada, every province is different. So you have to check kung magkano ang rate ng every province. As of my last paycheck, yung kinsenas ko, is inabot ako ng 3,200. That's net. So, as of my last paycheck, ang gross is 84,786. Sorry, binabasa ko dito sa my computer screen. So, 84,786. So, ang gross income ko as of last paycheck noong November last week is 3,391,440 pesos. So, ang monthly gross ko is inaabot, monthly ha, inaabot ng 7,000 to 9,000 Canadian dollars. Ang palitan ng Canadian dollars ngayon is pumapatak na sa 39 to 41. Sa Philippine peso, umaabot siya ng 280 to 360,000 per month. Okay? Ang annual estimate is 99K. 99,000 dollars. Canadian dollars. So, annual estimate in peso is 3,960,000. Okay? So, tulad na sinabi ko kanina, salary differs in every province. And then, yung portability mo, kung may experience ka sa Pilipinas or experience ka sa ibang bansa, they, that will carry on. And then, ang undergraduate dito, undergraduate nurse is sabihin na sa second year, third year, or fourth year, pwede ka na mag-work as a nurse right away. Ang undergraduate, ang rate nila is $20, $28 per hour. Just imagine. Pero mas less yung kanilang mga responsibilities. Graduate nurse, sabi, ibig sabihin, nakapagtapos ka ng nursing pero hindi ka pa nakapag-take ng NCLEX. Ang rate nila is $33 per hour. Pero ng registered nurse na wala pang experience, yung unang-una, fresh grad, is $37 per hour. And then yung maximum rate is $50 per hour. There's no difference if you're a Filipino nurse or a German nurse or other foreign nurse, okay? We earn the same but it could differ from the state to state or hospital to hospital but just to give you a range probably in peso around 150 to 200 and it could increase then if you stay in the same hospital and then every year you get an increase Salary ranges from 180,000 to 200,000 pesos net pay and Take note guys, I'm a night shift nurse and I do work every weekends. So your salary will be different if you're or in a state that has a higher cost of living. Pay every weekends is higher compared to the regular weekdays. Unfortunately, I cannot divulge the exact amount I am earning kasi for confidentiality. You can check naman yung pay guide sa fair work. Uh, .gov.au Do naka-specify yung pay ng mga nurses Depende kung anong level of nurse ka na Pero you can check sa payscale.com Ang range is about $26 to $42 so, Hourly naman yung rate dito Hindi pa rin sa facility kasi Minsan nagbibigay pa rin sila ng mas mataas Doon sa range ng payscale.com Iba rin yung weekend rate, iba rin yung overtime rate Additional fees din yun Of course, taking into consideration the tax as well More or less mga 30% yung tax and Eh, malaki talaga yung tax dito. In short, nurses pay here is considerably good. About my salary, I'm not yet that comfortable to share with you guys my exact salary. But I can share with you how much um, a fresh grad 
or a nurse with one year experience would earn. So they would probably earn about 1.6 million pesos here annually. So hindi pa deducted yung taxes and cost of living. If you have like five years experience in the Philippines or in Saudi or in the Middle East, they would actually consider it. So it's a good, good place to work here in New Zealand because um, hindi ka babalik from zero. No. So on the average around uh, pagdating nila dito, it's about 23,000 pounds an entry ng isang nurse dito. 23,000 pounds in a year. Kung i-convert ko siya sa peso, that's around 1.4, maybe 1.5 uh, million pesos depending sa exchange rate na no. Before, when I was in the Philippines, I've been a medical surgical nurse for two years. And then I applied here in the US and I was hired in a nursing home. And I've been here for 10 months now. The job is challenging. Um, the ratio that I have right now is 1 is to 50 plus patients, especially when you're a night nurse, you're the only nurse at night. So it will be different. If you're working uh, as a day shift, it'll be different in a hospital setting because they're following the ratio like one is to five. Even if you have a lot of patients in a nursing home, that is manageable because you have CNAs that can help you. You have LPNs. The patients are more stable and um, the work is already a routine. I've been here in New Zealand for about eight months and I'm an orthopedic nurse and I'm actually enjoying my job because I actually have time to have a conversation with my patients and I think I'm giving them the standard care that they actually need and I'm very confident that I'm able to finish my job properly because before you know you guys would know yung mga nag-work sa public hospital na mamadali kayo or alam nyo may mga hindi kayo nagawa after the shift. But here, I'm very happy naman, well-staffed naman kadalasan. Received ko yung registration ko na January 2018. And then after that, nag-apply na ako. I started working April 2018. Work muna ako nun sa part-time due to care arrangement issues. Nag-resign din ako dun sa first job ko. Thankfully, I was just recently hired. Newbie pa rin ako, so I'm still starting my working journey. Currently, full-time nurse, cath lab uh, facility. With regards to workload, personally, as compared to Philippines and Singapore, I feel na medyo mas light workload ko sa Australia. Siyempre, that's my personal opinion lang. And other nurses may have different views as well. Hindi iba't ibang adjustments, especially kapag nagsa-start ka na. Um, yung routine, being aware of the Australian healthcare system, uh, like yung language. Paling mga times na hindi ko maintindihan yung mga sinasabi nila or yung mga terms nila. Um, I've been a nurse here in Germany for almost three years now. I am working in a university hospital here in Freiburg, Germany. It's a semi-private hospital. And the patients that I'm dealing with are patients that are post-operative. Um, post uh, from the brain surgery, from spinal surgeries, and so neurosurgery department. The work that we do in as nurses here in Germany are also similar. Uh, in the Philippines, what we do there, we carry out doctor's orders. We are more focused on the, like the care of the body of the patients. Um, since the patients doesn't have, you know, real relatives 24 seven by their side, we always have to be there for the patient. Okay, even if they don't need us, we have to attend to them and ask what they need. And para sa kanila important yung body washing, assisting patients to stand up. Since post-op nine patients namin, we help them stand up, we help them walk, um, we help them with almost their activities, of the, uh, with their daily living activities. And uh, it's it's okay. It's, it's easy naman. We also carry out orders. We give infusions, we give medicines, we do procedures, we insert um, some 
catheters, um, suero, but most of the stations in Germany doesn't allow nurses to insert suero. But in my station, in the neurosurgery, we are the ones who do that. What makes it difficult is the language. So you have to talk um, the whole time in Germany. Well, I've been here in the UK po for 10 years. No? I started in the NHS. I worked in the wards. Dito po, one is to six uh, normal ko hawa in the day and then in the evening, one is to 12 pwede, magdoble yan. Pero at both instances, meron kang healthcare assistant to help you, assist you sa pagbigay ng care sa kliyente. So, pag uh, NHS total care yan, when I say total care, hindi lang medication, carry out of orders, Meron din obviously yung hygiene and nutrition ng pasyente, you look after them as well. Uh, after that, nag-increase like, yung pagiging hands-on ko kasi I moved up to HDU for a while, mga 3 years po yun. And in HDU, um, ang HDU nga pala is High Dependency Unit which is a step down from intensive care. Um, dito po is 1 is to 3. Uh, pag uh, mabigat ang pasyente mo, 1 is to 2, pwedeng 1 is to 1. Pero pag yung mga pasyente is to go, 1 is to 4. Tapos may roaming kaming healthcare assistant to help us. Uh, after that po, I went into uh, a private clinic, a private endoscopy clinic in London. So ang kagandahan naman is you learn new skills dahil specialized siya. Mas magiging specialist din yung knowledge mo. In our case, because it was endoscopy, Marami akong natutunan na otherwise hindi ko matututunan sa wards or sa, even sa critical care setting. So magandang experience po yun. And then now, ito na po ang uh, trabaho ko ngayon. I work for a nurse ex as a nurse examiner for insurance. Dito naman, another set of skills. And dito, ang what is paramount is customer service naman. And it helps me to actually speak more with people to get more engaged with what they uh what is what is important for them so napaaganda po ng avenues natin to work here in the united kingdom so nag work ako sa my dubai united emirates for two years before migrating to canada to work as a living care caregiver for another two years so some problems sa visa ko so i couldn't upgrade to like rn right away so i challenged the uh, lpn exam at Bovali College for internationally educated nurses and luckily I passed. Nagwork ako as a full-time LPN for the next five years on diff on different units, acute medical surgical unit, acute medical and cardiac unit, uh, geriatrics rehab unit, and then outpatient cardiac and diagnostic cl clinics. And then while working as, as a full-time LPN, I was also doing my De, uh, degree Bachelor of Science in Nursing sa my Atabasca University online channel. Sa emergency, they'll come to triage, magbibigay sila ng sitas. So, one, two, three, four. One is very sick. Two, medyo, medyo okay. Siguro mapunod sila sa mga, mga acute, acute pod. Three, okay lang sila. Four, yung mga hindi masyadong seryoso. Hindi, mga hindi, not seri mga seryoso. What I mean is, medyo, hindi masyadong acute. And then, we check them in, we do their assessment. We do initially the uh, head, uh, the focus assessment and then the head to toe. We draw their blood because we have a lab technician in the hospital, but in emergency we have to draw we have to draw their own blood. We have to uh, order their blood works. So we have policy and protocol in emergency that we as nurses can actually put the orders in behalf of the doctors as per policy and procedure. So, kung ano nag-fit na policy and procedure sa prosthetic concern ng pasyente, na kami ang maglalagay ng, for example, chest, plate, chest pain. Kami na mag, mag, maglalagay ng lights, troponin, and CBC. Pwede kami na mag-collect. So, kalang alam namin yung tubes na color. Tapos, ECG, tapos we need to interpret the ECG, tapos we need to collect uh, for old ECGs, and then we need to start an IV, and then we need to run TKVO, and then we, and then we wait for the doctor's order and then if the patient is like having chest pain we, we can order like aspirin and then we can give the aspirin we can order it like as, as nurses do some emergency and we have to wait for the doctor's order for chest x-ray or or, uh, or ct scan or you know and then and then we send them for x-ray and all that stuff <laughs> Normally, 
ang working hours is 38 hours per week. May times din na kailangan mag-overtime. Other hospitals na merong options na yung overtime mo is either isasama sa sweldo mo or time in lieu. Additional hours for leave. Of course, you are entitled to an annual leave. Leave is um, accrued. You earn yun depende na sa number of hours na um, pinaso. Entitled to sick leave. May sakit yung family member. You can opt to be on leave and file a carer's leave. Maternity, medyo wala pa akong idea kasi hindi pa namin nagagamit. Number one is healthcare. Healthcare po sa uh, the United Kingdom is free through the NHS. The NHS promises to be free on point of care, lalo na sa emergency. So, wala tayong kailangang isipin na problema kung halimbawa may long-term illness or let's say emergency procedures na kailangan ng NHS po laging nandyan. So, that's one good benefit po dito sa United Kingdom. Second naman po on our list is the annual leave. Ang annual leave dito or siguro sa Pilipinas tawag natin vacation leave is, quite, is very um, generous. Annually, at least sa NHS, 7 weeks po yan. Entitled kang gamitin within 1 year. Maganda rin po ang benefit dito sa UK is the sick leave. Ang sick, ang sick leave po dito, maabot ng 6 months. Pero fair warning po, Ang sick leave po is dahil may sakit ka na medyo long term. Hindi po dahil gusto mo lang magkaroon ng sakit, hindi ka napapasok. Hindi po. Ang sick leave po, meron certification yan from your GP. Then we move on to maternity leave. Ang maternity leave po, dito maabot hanggang 12 full months. Okay? Yan po, ganun po katagal. Pero huwag kayong mag-alala kung kayo po ay tatay, meron din po paternity leave. Kaya lang po ang paternity leave, around 2 weeks lang. But still, at least hindi tayo nakakalimutan. So, I pay insurances that includes the pension, the health insurance, and so whatnot. Now, uh, for the pension, if we get old and we want to, you know, retire, we will get money. And for example, we get sick, we need to go to the hospital, uh, a procedure must be done. We are covered. It's all covered, guys. Ang saya-saya. Kasi talagang hindi kami mamamoblema dyan. Lahat are required to get health insurance. Now, those are the benefits. Like, for example, another benefit is... For example, you're a mom, you're a parent, then you have children, and then they can go to school for free. Everything is free. Now, if you're a parent too, your tax will be lowered, and then you will also get kindergeld or what they call ch children's allowance. You will get extra money for your children. And talagang okay. Now, when it comes to work, they are really employee-friendly, very pro-employee. Now, in my, our hospital, I work 38.5 hours a week now i really enjoy that because even though like for this week i work seven days straight but then after that i will have long day offs as well and sometimes i just work two days a week and then after that a long off and then seven days basta lang ma-accomplish yung 38.5 hours per week namin is okay na and other leaves for example vacation leave um we get 30 days leaves for our vacation that is paid for sick leaves we get paid sick leaves as well and what's good about here in germany is that if you're sick you're sick if you're having a headache and you feel like you cannot go to work because it's really it's really bothering you it's giving you a hard time you can call in sick and no one would actually question you because sick is sick okay now if you feel like um, if you are on your period and you're really having bad day, um, getting cramps and all, you can call in sick. Okay? If you're starting to get flu or a little bit um, sipon or colds and it's really bothering you too, you're having a hard time to breathe and that means you're gonna be um, not fit to work, then you can call in sick. So after three days, if you're still sick, you can go to the doctor and get a medical certificate and even extend your sick leaves, which is paid. Okay, um, for other um, types of benefits, like for example, night shifts, we have night differentials, um, overtimes, either it will depend on the employer, either they will pay for that or you can get extra day offs 
for overtime. But you know, overtime is not also here in Germany. They do not actually allow it. They're very punctilious or very on time. If your shift ends at 2.15, you will have to go home at 2.15. Or you can just leave your workmates and then... Because it's your right, eh. That's what I really love here in Germany. As a permanent resident in Canada, and if you're a citizen, health is free. So, if you have merch, you don't have to pay You need to see your family doctor, you don't have to pay Do blood works, ECG, uh, x-ray, meds, admis admissions sa may hospital, bed provides a bed, wala kang babayaran kahit isang kahit isang kusin. Since ako nagwo-work ako sa my government and my employee uh pays 80% of my med med prescription, so 80% of it. And then ang binabayaran ko lang is 20%. And then so dental, that includes dental, massage, chiropractor and my and yung prescriptions nga. So working hours Per week varies. Yeah, it has to be at least 40 hours per week. Pag lumagpas ka ng 40 hours per week mo, kailangan mag overtime ka na. So, ang overtime, ang, that's times 2 ng sahod mo. So, so yung shift differentials, meron kami tinatawag dito. Yung evening shift, pag nagtrabaho ka, that's additional $2.75 per hour. And then night shift, pag nagtrabaho ka, that's additional $5 per hour. And then pag nagtrabaho ka ng weekends, $3.25. Um, if you reach your second year anniversary, they would actually pay half of your health insurance if you would like to get a uh, health insurance. But cover ka naman dito ng government if you know if you get ill or sick or you get into an accident. It's free. Sick pay, uh, we do get 10 paid sick leave every year. Annual leave would be around 6 weeks per year and you will get extra leave if you do a lot of night and afternoon shifts. If you work on a holiday, you'll get a loo day. And maternity leave, I'm not really familiar with the maternity leave here because I'm not gonna benefit from it. But over time, you would be paid twice of your hourly rate. So if you're like earning $30 per hour, you will earn $60 per hour. But of course, there's tax, pa, so it's a big Health insurance, dental, uh, vision insurance, we have paid time off, PTO or leaves, also paid sick leaves. We do have what they term as 401k or the retirement plan. Definitely, there are overtime pay, holiday pay, night differential, and evening shift also has differential pay. <laughs> Traveling is not as good as Europe because New Zealand is very isolated and the plane ticket would be expensive just traveling outside the country. But if you will travel around New Zealand, it would be cheap and there's a lot of things to see. Um, there's mountain ranges, beaches, white or black. Um, there are sand dunes, there are ski resorts. and. Auckland is beautiful. It's not too big. It's not too small. It's perfect for um, everyone. I only work three 12-hour shifts in a week. So I'm getting four days off. So um, you can definitely travel to other states. However, if you choose to travel by land, it will be a long drive. And I can still hang out with friends um, to whatever I'd like to do. Yeah, and I can vlog. Normal annual leave or normal vacation leave ng mga tao is about seven weeks. So ang haba po, no? And you can't really take that those seven weeks and all in one go. Very special instances lang yun nangyayari. So on the average, you can save up to two, three, or even four weeks. And then you could do something about that. So ano yung work-life balance doon? Karamihan po ng mga Pilipino umuwi sa Pilipinas annually. Dahil nga meron sila 3 to 4 weeks na hindi nila ginagamit rin ni reserve nila sa ganon. If you want to stay local, ang United Kingdom is a very beautiful country. In fact, you can cross England, punta ka ng Scotland if you want to, punta ka ng Wales, punta ka ng Northern Ireland. Lahat yan, they have their own charms and their own beauty. But kung gusto mo naman mag-abroad, pumunta ng Europe, 
Amsterdam is an hour away. Paris, France is an hour away. Gusto mo mas malayo ng konti. Spain, Portugal, two to three hours. Italy is not that far as well. So, maraming pwedeng puntahan. Um, even if I just have like three days off, I can go and travel to wherever I want within Europe or even outside Europe. Because we have a very good visa na I can, you know, if, even if I just have one day off, I can go to Switzerland and just take the bus and go to Switzerland and take pictures there. What if I have, you know, more day offs? Um, since the community is growing here, I invite other friends from other cities in Germany and then we go to different countries. And that's what I really enjoy. Okay, like for example, if I want to go to the Philippines, I take my one month off in the Philippines. And if I want, if I have seven days off, I just go to Belgium. Diba? Parang saya, travel is life. On Thursday, may tinatawag na long shopping. Mga malls ay open until 9 p.m. Otherwise, the rest of the days, until 5 p.m. lang. For us, sa family namin, we appreciate yung ganun kasi parang you tend to have more family time. Hindi ka na magkatambay sa mall. So, ang option mo is to have dinner with the family. Like in the Philippines, family-oriented din sila. So, ang maganda din dito sa Australia is they promote outdoor activities. Free yung mga parks, free yung mga beach. You can just bring food. And libre na yung pupuntahan mo. Trip yung mga long drive, camping. I don't think ika nga sabi nga nila, it's very very hard. At the age of 31, I was able to, I think I was able to fulfill my goal. I'm, I'm, I'm okay. I'm, nag-work na ako as, uh, as a registered nurse. Uh, nakabili na ako ng bahay. On my own. It's a brand new house. Nagawa ko na yung gusto ko. I'm a vlogger. Ito na yung gusto ko eh. Dati pinapangarap ko na maging vlogger. And uh, I have my own car, my parents are here, I have my own family, I have my partner, I have my puppies. And then my partner and I usually, uh, we try to go out, we, we try to travel at least every six months. 